Welcome back, faithful peeps, to Watson's World, the channel where we dive into the mysterious, the perplexing, and sometimes the downright horrifying. I'm Kevin Watson, and today we have an intricate and disturbing case that has kept an entire nation on edge for years. We're heading to the parish of Clarendon, Jamaica, a parish renowned for Milk River Bath, a mineral spa famous for the therapeutic value of its water, but one that's also hiding a dark secret, a case that has both baffled and captivated the country's populace. It's a tale of ambition, betrayal, and lingering doubt. The case of Senior Superintendent of Police, Dathan Henry, a well-respected figure who was just days away from a career-defining promotion before his shocking death. So, dim the lights, keep the imagination active, but don't let your guard down, because the reality we're about to explore is stranger and far more unsettling than fiction. What do you have to say for yourself? What's for dinner? What's going on here? What's that stink? What's this for? What time is it? What's that? Elementary, my dear Watson. Dathan Henry was not your run-of-the-mill police officer. He was deeply committed to reducing crime rates in Clarendon and had a significant impact on the community. Now, he was in line for a major promotion to assistant commissioner of police and many believed this was a well-deserved advancement in his 27-year long career. Approximately three months before his untimely death, SSP Henry began experiencing mysterious symptoms, stomach cramps, nausea and a general sense of unwellness. Symptoms so generic, yet persistent. They even evaded a precise medical diagnosis. Multiple visits to the Maypen Hospital and Kingston Public Hospital could not pin down what was ailing him. On May 6, 2012, SSP Dathan Henry was admitted to Kingston Public Hospital where he took his last breath. His death was as shocking as it was tragic and it sent ripples across Jamaica. An autopsy followed by a toxicological report found something both eye-opening and chilling. Henry didn't die of natural causes. He was poisoned. And not just by any random substance, but by a combination of chemicals found in rodenticides, rat poison. Specifically, warfarin was present in his system, a substance commonly used as an anticoagulant or blood thinner, but also found in rat poison. It took over two years for a toxicology report to reveal warfarin in his system. Yes, you heard that. Over two years. Warfarin, a common blood thinner, was found alongside chemicals typically present in rodenticides. One must ask, why did it take so long for this toxicological report to surface? Could crucial evidence have been lost in this time? The question of delay itself cast another layer of shadow on this already dark tale. But here's where the case takes an even more bewildering turn. According to Roxon Henry, Dathan's brother, Dathan was not the kind of person to eat or drink from just anyone. He was cautious, vigilant even. Traits that had served him well in his decades-long police career. If Dayton Henry was cautious about who he accepted food or drink from, then that further narrows down the list of potential suspects. 
it would have to be someone he deeply trusted, someone he would let his guard down around. And therein lies the most horrifying question of all. Was the perpetrator someone within Dayton's innermost circle? Could it have been someone he fought beside, someone he looked out for, someone he thought looked out for him? But let's circle back to the poison. Warfarin is usually slow acting. It has to be metabolized by the liver. So how does a man so careful about his food and drink end up systematically poisoned? Could the poisoned have been administered through other means like inhalation, skin absorption? Given the complexity and the duration of the poisoning, whoever did this had to have intimate knowledge of Dathan's life and habits. Could someone have tampered with Dathan's personal items, his creams, his soaps, perhaps even his clothing? We have heard about espionage stories, instances where agents are poisoned through the tips of umbrellas or in the lining of their gloves. Now, while this may sound far-fetched, those methods exist. And when someone as vigilant as Dathan Henry succumbs to systematic poison, perhaps it's time to consider the unthinkable. Could warfarin be administered in other ways though? Based on my research, it's unlikely but not impossible. For the warfarin to be effective, it usually has to be metabolized by the liver. That said, it could be combined with other substances to create a more immediate lethal cocktail. Considering the length, someone would have to go to carry out this elaborate poisoning. I wouldn't rule out any method. Whoever did this knew what they were doing. They had time, access, and a dark intention. Nothing is too far-fetched at this point. After Dathan Henry's death was ruled as poisoning, the major investigation task force took over the case. While this seemed like a step in the right direction, not everyone was pleased with the investigation's focus or lack thereof. Rokes and Henry, again Dathan's brother, and the family spokesman, he was overtly critical of the way the police handled the investigation. According to Roxon, uh, investigators honed in narrowly on Dayton's romantic relationships while astonishingly overlooking close relations in the police force itself. Why is the lens only focused on personal relationships? In my opinion, this kind of approach is narrow and myopic. I don't think Dayton only had girlfriends. He had colleagues, friends, and subordinates, all of whom had different levels of access to him. Why weren't the police looking there? Now here's another thing to consider, my beautiful people. Dayton Henry was working on curbing gang violence in Clarendon, a role that put him at great potential risk. Could this job have exposed him to unconventional methods of harm? What about his office? His vehicle? The JCF has all sorts of enemies, and so it's easy to believe SSP Dathan Henry was a target. Being so involved in trying to dismantle criminal activities, it's horrifying to consider. But his office or car could have been compromised. I don't think we should put anything past these criminals, especially criminals in Clarendon. There were a lot of drug smuggling, extortion, murders, a lot of atrocities taking place there in Clarendon. Now, presiding coroner Patrick Murphy oversaw an inquest that took a deep dive into the evidence. After 35 minutes of deliberation, 
a seven-member jury agreed that Henry was systematically poisoned. Despite this, they could not identify who might be behind this horrific act. It was a judgment that left more questions than answers. Years have passed since that tragic day. But for Rokes and Henry and his family, the fight is far from over. With a potential promotion hanging in the air at the time of Dayton's death, who stand to benefit from his absence? Could it be tied to his relentless drive to curb gang violence in Clarendon? Was it a result of personal enmity? Or is there a more sinister force at play within the ranks of the Jamaica Constabulary Force? The family has vowed to get to the bottom of this. According to the family, Dayton Henry did not poison himself. He did not commit suicide. They insisted someone poisoned him. A statement that reverberates throughout the hearts of everyone demanding justice for Senior Superintendent Dathan Henry. And so, the mysterious, heartbreaking case of Dathan Henry remains open. A wound in the heart of Jamaica and all who knew him. But as long as questions remain, so does the pursuit of truth. And we're all a part of that journey. Before we wrap up today's video, we're going to delve into a profile of who I believe the perpetrator may be to try and make sense of this puzzling case. Remember guys, this is purely speculative and shouldn't replace a formal criminal investigation. But it might give us some valuable angles to consider. Bear in mind that it is based on the information that is available. Now let us start out with the relationship dynamics. The perpetrator likely had a high level of intimacy with Dayton Henry, perhaps a family member, close friend, or colleague. The fact that Dayton didn't eat from just anyone and was particular about his food implies a deep trust in the person or persons who had access to him. It may not be just about the act of murder, but also about the betrayal, adding another layer of psychological complexity. The systematic poison over time suggests that the person responsible is both methodical and patient, possibly plotting the administration of the poison over an extended period. You see, poisoning is often considered a passive-aggressive act. This suggests to me that the perpetrator might have had underlying resentments or feeling of inferiority in relation to Dathan, choosing a method that didn't require direct confrontation. The use of warfarin and other chemicals indicates a degree of expertise in chemistry or pharmacology, or at least someone who did their research well. This could be a person who has family members or friends who are chemists or pharmacists or someone in the health industry. Now, the person may have had something to gain from Henry's absence either professionally or personally, and that's obvious. The perpetrator probably had a high degree of access to Henry's daily activities and his eating and drinking habits. The perpetrator likely is willing to take high risk as the chances of detection increased with each of Henry's hospital visits. I believe the sophistication of the crime suggests that the perpetrator may be above average intelligence. This person may be very smart. This crime likely involves a complicated emotional motive, such as resentment, jealousy, or a need for control over Henry. Systematic poisoning as opposed to one-time act speaks volumes about the perpetrator's need for control. They didn't want a quick end. They wanted to watch, to observe, and potentially to derive satisfaction from their victim's prolonged 
suffering. I believe the meticulous nature of the act might point towards a perpetrator with narcissistic traits. Someone who believes they are too smart to get caught. Who gets a sense of grandiosity from being able to carry out such a crime under everyone's noses. The perpetrator may be skilled in manipulating people and situations, perhaps even with formal education in psychology or a related field. The person would likely be intimately familiar with the localities Henry um, frequented, narrowing the pool of suspects to those who live or work close to him. Given Henry's impeding promotion, professional envy, could have been a driving factor. The act might have been more about sabotaging Henry's success rather than just ending his life. I also believe that the delay in the toxicology report might indicate that the perpetrator had knowledge of the inefficiencies or gaps in the healthcare system and exploited these for their benefits. They're also aware of the inefficiencies in carrying out investigations in Jamaica, which made it easier. Now, here's my final take, guys. Given the nature of Henry's work against gang violence, the perpetrator might have lived in constant fear or paranoia. Their act could be a desperate attempt to regain a sense of security, even if through a heinous crime. Which brings me to this, peeps. What if it was indeed a love interest who wanted to get out of the relationship with Henry, but because of his power and connections, found it hard to get out, so they resorted to poison him? Is it someone from within the Con um, Jamaica Constabulary Force, given the initial investigations were reportedly narrow? Could the perpetrator be a family member or close friend, someone who could easily bypass Henry's caution about food and drink? Or is it tied to Henry's work against gang violence, making him a target for an entirely different reason? Could the delay in the toxicology report be an intentional hindrance to the investigation? What are the psychological profiles of people in Henry's inner circle? Do any of them fit this profile more than others? These are all speculative points and questions. But each could be a piece of the puzzle. Someone out there knows something. And perhaps this profile will jog a memory or encourage someone to come forward. After all, the key to solving this mystery might be a single overlooked detail or a seemingly insignificant memory. Guys, this is one of those puzzling cases coming out of Jamaica. If you have any information as it relates to who may have been involved in Henry's death. Reach out to me at thenoblecop at gmail.com. Let us make a difference, guys. I will end this story today by saying, let us be our brother's keeper. Let us build a better Jamaica. As per usual, go ahead and click on the subscription button if you have not yet subscribed. Also, click on the notification bell so that you'll be alerted every time I upload a new video. Guys, like and share this video. Until next time, my beautiful people, walk good, yaman. Yeah,